So overcoming adversity. You know, we, we say the word adversity and overcoming adversity as if we've won something when, we, when we're done. Um, as if there's some kind of prize that you get for, for overcoming adversity. You, know, you, you never truly overcome adversity. Uh, you become more resilient. Uh, you become tougher. Uh, but you never really overcome it. I think overcoming it is, is something that uh, is, an over, is an overstatement. Um, in my adversity, uh, being jailed for almost a year on a crime that you didn't commit, only to be mixed up with someone else's name, um, to be pleaded out to a felony and never served a day in jail. Uh, for most people, that uh, they consider that an adversity. I considered it the end game for me. Um, here I am, an African American male. Uh, I'm a felon, and I'm in the state of Georgia. Uh, you know, where do you go? Where do you go from there? Uh, after you apply for job after job after job, if you can imagine applying for hundreds of jobs, and because of a little box that says you're a felon. It, but that box means so much more than that. It, it doesn't just say you're a felon. When you're reading the box, the box says you're unworthy. The box says that you're not supposed to be here. That box says that we don't want you. That box says that you don't deserve the same rights that the rest of the American people get. So when you read that box and, and it says felon, it doesn't just mean that word doesn't just mean you committed a crime. It means that you're unworthy of an American life. So I checked that box almost, uh, I can say over, probably over a thousand times I checked that box um, of being a felon. Even though, you know, I never served a day in jail, even though the crime was violation of a temporary protective order that I took out. And even though the prosecutors agreed that that, hey, you're a first-time offender, instead of fighting this, how about you just, just go about your life for the next three years and you won't ever, ever have to uh, see this on your record if you, if you be good. You know, not knowing that in the state of Maryland there is no first-time offender, so when I got back home, there was no charges to transfer over, so I just took the charge on my permanent record as being a felon that never served time in jail or never committed a violent crime. So you start to think, what do you do at that point? And my brain said, I will no longer check the felony box. And that's lie number one. So already, you go down this slippery path of saying, if I want to survive, do I tell people that I have a criminal record? Well, you start off saying, well, yes, I want to be honest. I want people to hire me for who I am. And then you turn out that no one wants to hire you because of who you are because you are already considered unworthy. You're already considered not worthy of being part of the American dream. So the very first time that I said, no, I'm not a felon, I can remember the day I was applying for a job at Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I've never worked at fast food a day in my life, but I just knew I was going to be the best fryer of chicken that there could be. And from my interview, I interviewed very well, she hired me on the spot. No one, not, it was not necessary for her to do a background check, so I got the job. Six weeks later, I was the, I was the assistant manager. And I worked very hard at my job. I worked endless hours at my job. I got up enough, enough power inside of me to apply for another job, lie number two. You know, I applied for a job as a loss prevention detective for a company that served TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Uh, immediately got hired because of the way I interviewed. No background check needed. But see, here's when covering up who you are because you want to attain this, this American dream catches up with you. I was in North Carolina doing detective training. I get a knock on the door. It's the police department. 
They said they had a fugitive warrant for my arrest. And of course, I can't wonder why they would have a fugitive warrant for an arrest for a person that hasn't committed a crime. But a couple, couple hundred miles away, there was a um, robbery at a KFC that I used to work at. And when they ran the backgrounds on all the former employees, the only person that lied on an application was me. So since the person wore a mask and since the person was black, they assumed the person was me and I was arrested. So that was lie number two and another adversity in my life in which I sat in prison for a full year only for a seven minute trial to say, oh, by the way, we had your name mixed up with someone else, Earl M. Johnson, who was a felon, um, and you're not guilty. So from there, I had to figure out how how do I put my life back together? And I put my life back together by taking on the same issues that Americans considered uh, the, the, the heinous crimes. I took on the drugs in my community. I took on the, the crime in my community. I took on the people that they considered unworthy. And I, and I fought for those who they considered unworthy. And I helped lock up those who, who were committing the, the violent crimes in my community. So by taking on the issues that others got treated unfairly with, I was able to, to I guess, transform my own life. Um, you know, I never want to see anyone in jail. So that's why I always push for second chances. Everyone has something in them that they can give. If I was sitting in jail today, I know that my neighborhood would still be having 12 murders a year. Because I'm not sitting in jail today, my neighborhood has zero murders. Because I helped put together the task force, the police, the city, the city, the, the city resources to be able to reduce our crime in our community. So I wonder, once again, was it my lie that saved my life? or? Was it the fact that I took on the issues that affected my life? But I can say that I never overcame my adversity. I live with the consequences every single day of my life. But I do know that my community is better because of the adversity. So I'm not overcoming adversity. I'm using the adversity to transform lives.